Alrighty, my friends, in this video, you're going to learn how to narrow down your search in an API call by adding a, another parameter. Hey there, friend, my name is Darren, and in this video series, we're learning how to incorporate the web API component with our Thunkable X app. And this video specifically really, really builds on the last video in this series. So I have a link to the playlist down in the description. So be sure to go and watch that last video first if you have not. So the functionality in our app is we select a state, we get a list of breweries, and then we show information based on um, a brewery that is selected. But uh, what if we want to narrow down the list of breweries that is returned? Specifically, right now, it's only returning a list of 50. So if there's actually more than 50 in like the API database, we're not actually getting a full list of breweries. And that's something that I discovered by reading through the documentation on the API and through a little bit of testing. So what we're going to do in this video is actually check to see if there are 50 results returned. If there are 50 results returned, we're going to ask the user to specify the city inside of the state that they want to search by. And then once they specify that city, we will then show them a list of breweries in that state and in that city. Let's go ahead and jump into the code and I'll show you how easy this is. All right, so we are going to start out on the results screen and we're going to do the, the basic steps like I just told you. So the first thing I mentioned was we want to check if the list of results equals 50. If it does equal 50, then we're going to add the city. So we need to in, add in that check and that check encoding is called an if statement. So we'll come to control and we'll drag in this if do block. Now I'm going to put this right before we show the text items. And so what we want to do is check to see if the length of this is greater than or equal to 50. So we'll grab in the greater than block, change that to greater than or equal to. Go ahead and put in our number of 50. And then there's actually a math block, I believe. It might be a list block, let's see. Yeah, I think it's a list block called length of, and that's what we want to check. So we want to check the length of the names list. So up here, we, we're defining this list, creating this list, and we wanna to check to see if, if it's equal to 50 or greater. If it is, then we want to narrow down our search, and we're going to do that by um, adding another screen to specify a city. So let's go ahead and add a navigate block and we'll add another screen. We'll call this um, screen city. All right, and then back on our results, we'll go to the blocks. Let's just clean up um, that code just a little bit more. So navigate to city if it's greater than or equal to 50 else, we will do this. So we'll add an else statement and else will actually um, do what we were originally doing, which was um, showing that list of, um, or showing that names list in the text items. So that's all we need to do on the results screen for now. Let's go ahead and build out the city screen. All right, so quite a bit of components to add here. Um, so go ahead and bear with me as we add these and we'll go ahead and design these after we add all of the components. So we'll start off with a label for the title, a label for the instructions. Then we're going to add a column component. And then inside of that column component, we'll go ahead and add a label. And then a, actually we'll do another label. So this is where we're going to display the current state selected. We're going to do a similar thing by adding a Let's do column, make sure this column is below. So we have our column with the label and the label, and then we're going to, in the second column, add a label and then a text input. And this is where the users are going to input the city that we want them to specify. And then finally at the bottom, we will add a row. Let's 
see if I can drag this in there. And then in that row, we're just gonna add um, two buttons. So pretty simple, uh, one to go back and one to start, or one to continue with the search. All right, so here we go. So the top label, let's define this. So this will be um, brew base, and we'll give that a font size of 30 and color it orange. Now for the label, I have quite a bit to copy here. So let me actually just copy that over instead of typing it out. And so this is going to say your search uh, returned too many results. Your search returned too many results. Refine your search by specifying the city you wish to search. So that's the instructions. And we'll go to text style. Scroll down to text align, set that to center, just to center that up. All right, good deal. Um, for this label, we'll call this, uh, this top, this top column is for our state. So we'll call this state selected, just to let the user know what state they selected. And then for this label, we'll leave it as that for now. We'll populate that later. So this will be the state selected label and we're going to give that a font size of 40 and then we'll do the same thing down here so this is going to be um, going to define the city label so this will be enter a city so asking the user to enter city all right so enter a city for type here let's go ahead and increase the size of this to 40 as well uh, we can set the color to orange and this label, did we also, yeah, we also want this to be orange. Did I, I didn't do that. Cool. And then for the last two buttons, we'll call this button back. And the next button search. Let's go ahead and give those names for the block screen. So search button. And then, oh, it didn't switch over for me. All right, back button. For both of these, we'll set the text color to orange. We will set the font size to 20. And then for this uh, row, we will set the horizontal alignment to space around, just to space those out. And then for um, each of these like sections here, I want to go ahead and define some space um, or define their height um, rather. So for the top two, we'll set these equal to 20%. And then for this bottom one, we'll set that to 15%. And then for the screen, the whole screen, we're going to set the vertical alignment space between. All right, so I think that is all we need as far as designing the screen. Um, one last thing I know I'll need is for this input, we'll call this city input. So the blocks will be pretty simple. Um, first thing we want to account for is whenever the screen starts. When the screen starts, the only thing we need to do is show the state that is selected. So we have this stored in a variable because so we have the state selected and we want to show this in the state selected label. So that is the label that we have on the screen. So from state selected set text to state selected so that we're showing that. Next thing we want to account for is for the back button. So whenever back is clicked, we will navigate back to the search screen. And then finally, for the city search button, um, or the search button, um, whenever this is clicked, we want to uh, grab whatever city is inputted by the user, so whatever is in the input. We want to store that in the city selected variable. So if you remember in the last video, um, we defined a variable called city selected. And so we're going to set that here to what is input by the user in the input field. So set city selected to city input get text. And then once that 
uh, variable is set, we will navigate to the results screen. All right, so before we actually go and test this out, let's go ahead and add this last piece of, piece of code here. And that is to check to see if the selected city is null or populated. So if a, if a city is defined, we know we have been um, to the city page and we, we need to account for that in our search. If it has not been defined, we can ignore it. So we're going to add a if block to check to see if city selected or selected city is defined. Um, so go to the logic, we'll grab um, a logic block here and say not equal to. All right, from there, let's grab the city selected block. And so we're going to check if city selected is not equal to null. So if it is not equal to null, meaning a city has been defined, well then we need to update our URL. So let's go ahead and duplicate this, drop this in here. And instead of saying by state, I know from looking at the API documentation, I can just say by city. And then instead of state selected, we want city selected. So what this is going to do is if a city is defined, it's going to append that city to our search and then continue on with um, the rest of, you know, pulling the actual breweries. If city is not defined, it's going to skip this and we're just going to get a list of breweries based on the state selected. So that, my friend, is all we need to do to kind of further drill down into this API search and adding an, an extra criteria. And so let's actually look at this um, inside of the code. All right, so here we are. Let's uh, make sure that our check works. I'm pretty sure that Louisiana doesn't have more than 50. Um, so yeah, whenever this screen loads, it just shows me a list of breweries. I, I'm not required to add a state. But let me go back to new search. I do know that California, however, does have more than 50. So whenever it hit that screen, it checked that, and then it's gonna send me to the city screen. Um, so here I can type in a city. Um, let's try, I don't know many cities in California. <laughs> let's try Reading search. All right, awesome. So two results searched. So what that did was originally I had more than 50 results and then it asked me to specify a city. And then once I entered that city, it narrowed down my search to just two. Anyways, so that is how you can um, kind of extend your API searching by adding another parameter to it. Well, hey friend, if you liked this video, please consider subscribing. I'm really wanting to grow this Thunkable X community here on YouTube. And if you're liking this series, be sure to let me know. I really want to hear your feedback. And don't forget about the cheat sheet that I have listed for you in the description. And lastly, as always, I want to wish you happy coding.